Okay, so now we're going to talk about the Edis 4 module. Specifically this one, the 6 and 8 are pretty much the same, just a little bit laid out differently. Uh, this is electronic distributed ignition, 4 cylinders. So let's look at the wiring here. So these two here are coil A and coil B outputs. So those go over here to these two wires, coil A and coil B. And then we have ground, power. This is for the shielding that uh, shields these two sensors, well these two wires. This is the VR sensor and this is the VR sensor. This wire is basically a grounded shield that's wrapped around them to prevent interference. Uh, this wire right here has nothing to do with what we're talking about. This wire and this green wire are the power input profile and the saw signal return. So what that means is Okay, so there's the sensor riding on the toothed wheel down there. So as the engine spins, the magnet on the tip of that changes inductance. And those two wires that are in there send those changes in inductance back to the module. So the module then calculates that square wave and sends it to the PCM for tax signal, basically, for the PCM. PCM then does timing corrections and sends that data back to the EDIS module through the other wire. This module takes care of all the timing all by itself. This is, you know, all pre OBD2 or the PCM would take care of that. So that allows this to completely have total control over the spark. So this missing pin here, pin 2, is where you would jam your wire in there if you were installing a tack. This is just a base model LX. Uh, with no attack in the dash so it's not wired in there. So the cam sensor which sits right there is the other input to the PCM to tell it where the number one cylinder is exactly so it can start calculating fuel pulse width and timing. That sensor and the other sensor are the same type of sensor and they both do the same thing but they have absolutely nothing to do with each other. This sensor will not have anything to do with spark. That only has to do with fueling. Okay, so testing for a no spark condition. Um, never seen one of these EDIS modules goes bad, but anything's possible. So what do we know so far? We know the VR sensor, variable reluctance sensor, sends a signal from the sensor over here to the module. The module then recalculates that, sends it to the PCM, and the PCM sends corrections. I'll also add that with no input return from the PCM, the EDIS module will default at 10 degrees no matter what. In case there's a, a flaw in the return, you can still run it. It'll run in a limp mode. It'll run like poop, but it'll still run. So first thing we need to do is we need to test for power at our coil. So I got it rigged up here and fortunately I don't have my keys so we're gonna do this real quick. Come on, get in there. Come on, what the hell? Fucker. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Okay, so for all that ridiculousness, we can see that we have power at the coil, which is exactly what we'd expect to see. Okay, so the second thing we need to do is test for power at our EDIS module. And as you can see, we got 11.6 volts, which means that my battery is severely dead, but it's enough. Next thing we'll do while we're right here is we'll move this over one pin. Uh, and then jam this in here, and then you can see that we have the same voltage uh, by testing the ground circuit is what we're doing right here. So we know that we have power and ground at the module, and we know that we have power at the coil. We don't need ground at the coil because the ground is supplied through these two wires from the uh, module itself right here. 
Okay, so the testing for the rest of it gets a little bit more complicated. So, here's what the Hallflex sensor looks like. And this is the PCM. It's not the actual PCM. I just happen to have piles of crap floating around here. So, the only way that we can test the outputs from the EDIS module of the PCM would be with an oscilloscope, which I don't have, so we're not going to be able to do that. The next step would be to test and make sure that the PCM is actually being turned on. And we'll... <clears throat> okay, we can also test the resistances in the coil drivers, but it's not really a effective test because if your coil is failed, sometimes they will fail only when they're hot, and it won't give you an accurate test because you can test it when it's cold and it'll work, but when it's hot it won't work, or the other way around. So if you do this other basic testing and uh, still have nothing, the best thing to do is just put a coil in it. These days they're pretty cheap. Okay, so che cheapest, cheapest, easiest and quickest way to test uh, for at least power to PCM is to go to the PCM relay. Okay, you can jam your voltmeter in there. You can see we got 11 volts. And see, so jam it in this side. We got nothing until we turn the key on. And see, so we have power coming out of the other side, which means that from at least here, we have power from the PCM relay. This one right here with the purple wire is for the fuel pump. So we can do interesting things with that also. If we have a random length of wire, we can jam it in here and here, and we can hot wire the fuel pump. I don't know if you can hear it, but key's off. Pump's running, so it doesn't really help us for this, but. Um, power wires are up in here. You could get in there and start testing them, but you have to find the paint out for this exact car, which really wouldn't be that hard. But that's the, the gist of how this system works. And to do some quick testing, this is pretty much as basic as it gets, except before we need an oscilloscope to test it more. But I don't have one of those, so that sucks.